On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. Okay, so as always with my tutorials, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't use a different tablet with a different app and still follow along with my process. So having said that, within the app Procreate, I've opened one of their default A4 canvas sizes, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI, and the color profile is set to sRGB, and the code would ends in 2.1 and it's on the list of options within Procreate. In terms of the brushes, I only use the brushes that come free within the app, so I'm using airbrushing soft brush. I might just use the medium brush also within airbrushing. Possibly I'll use the organic rainforest brush, which I might amend, and also with an artistic, I'm gonna use the leatherwood brush, which again, I'm going to amend. And also within luminance, probably the light pen as well. And in terms of the colors, I've got a pre-selected color palette and each of these color codes has a hexadecimal code that is linked to it. And each of these codes is down in the video description. So you can take a note of them and type them in this area one at a time, press enter and the color appears in this area. And then you can just tap it together yourself and construct this color palette. Or next to the color codes in the video description is a link that takes you to my Patreon and you can download the color file for free to save you some time. And also if you follow that link to Patreon, that is the place where you can support content like this on this channel and also gain access to exclusive content too. And if you like this kind of tutorial, then please give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe and don't forget the bell notification to make sure you're notified of all my future videos too. And with all that said and done, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do on layer one is go to my colors. I've got this color first color on the top row, and I'm just gonna drag from the circle into the canvas area to flood fill. And that just gets rid of that white intimidating background. Then I'm gonna, well, I'm also stay on the same layer. I'm gonna to go to the second color. I'm gonna to go to my brushes, airbrushing, soft brush. I'm gonna put the size pretty high at around 50% and 100% opacity. And I'm gonna aim for halfway across my canvas. Then I'm gonna go to the third color. Reduce it from 50 to about 30. Again, center of the canvas. Draw a line across, back to my colors. And then I'm gonna go for the fourth color. And I'm going to color from the bottom of the canvas up to about the halfway. Just kind of eyeball judge it there. And then I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur all of that in to about the 50% will do. I'm gonna to go to our layers and create a new layer, layer two. I'm gonna to go to the colors. I'm gonna choose the fifth color along. And I'm still gonna use a soft brush with an airbrushing, but I'm gonna reduce it down 2% size and about 60% opacity. And I'm going to go to the organic rainforest brush. And I'm gonna have it at a quite a small size, about 4% and about 60% opacity. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of that texture up here. A few kind of taps and just join them all together. Just create a band that goes across. Maybe a few more up in this area. Maybe I'll also reduce it down to the top end of 2%. And I kind of just have one or two broken kind of bits that just go off on their own as well. Then I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that in to about the 5%. I'll create a new layer layer three, and I think I'll change back to the airbrushing soft brush again. Keep it at 2% size and 60% opacity, and just a little bit further than down from that. And I'm pressing lightly, and I'm going to be doing it in some taps. And I'm just going to create something of a band that kind of cuts across. So if we just get that initial shape in first, now I don't want it to be completely horizontal, so maybe I can have it sloping and it comes slightly lower down over here so you know it doesn't cut across in a completely uniform or artificially too geometric kind of formation. I'm 
and we can just allow certainly in the kind of upper area some bits to create some interesting shapes a bit more irregularity maybe we can have another piece of it up here too some kind of circular motion in there as well just to build in some slightly rounder shapes and again just some breakaway pieces here and there too I'm just tapping some points and then maybe it can all kind of merge together there now I'm not happy with the bottom edge so I'm gonna go in further just tap in some more of this texture and if you can hear really gives you an indication of the way that I'm applying the brush strokes. Maybe I'll leave a gap and then do a little bit more here. And a bit more over here too. I'm going to create a new layer, layer four, and I'm gonna to go to the organic rainforest brush again. I'm gonna put it back up to about the 5% size and 100% opacity and we're going to do some much closer to pieces of cloud. So they're definitely going to have more noticeable kind of rough edges and things that stick out. So initially I'm just going to use this to get us started, create some irregular shapes. And it's just going to stop us having to do all of it completely manually. And then I'm just going to shoot a line across and maybe another one just to bring the bottom edge down a little bit. Now, if it feels like it's encroaching too much towards the bottom of the canvas, we can do something with that in a moment. But first of all, I just want to slide and duplicate that layer. And it just means that anywhere where it's a little bit light around the edge, we really want it to be kind of much more fuller on the opacity. After I've done that, I'm gonna tap on it, merge it down, slide, duplicate it again, and again, it just really solidifies that edge. Tap on it again, merge it down again. So all of the duplications and everything else is just on that one layer now. Then I'm going to go in with the eraser. I'm going to put the eraser on the airbrushing medium brush within soft, within airbrushing rather. I'm going to put it down to 2% size and 100% opacity. And now with this brush, I can just start to nibble away just with a tapping kind of dots. And I can really just sharpen and refine the edge of the cloud, get something that I'm more happy with. You could also try using something like the adjustments, the liquify, maybe the push, put it up to maybe 50%, 60% pressure, 60% distortion, and no momentum. And you know, you can push things around, play around with this, distort it if you're not quite happy with how it's gone. worth having a little bit more of a play with it get it to how you like it I'm going to go back in with the eraser still on the medium brush maybe there are some gaps and breaks in this cloud just hints of it here and there okay I'm going to take all of those new layers from two to four and I'm just going to pinch them together Bit tricky to do but if you persist he says there you go and all of that is on one layer now like I was saying before I don't want to encroach too much at the bottom of the edge of the canvas I'm going to go to the transform put it on the free form and then from the bottom blue circle just pinch it up a little bit and then it just it then frees up a little bit more space at the bottom and I think that's going to work a bit better go back to my layers back to layer one and create a layer that now is underneath layer two but above layer one I'm going to stay on my or go back to my rather my airbrushing soft brush back to my colors i'm going to use this first orange of these bright colors two percent size 60 percent opacity and i'm just going to allow it now to go pretty much around the edge of this cloud in areas the sun is going to be down in this area but it's just going to be highlighting the top edge of this cloud and it's just really useful to do it as a layer underneath Therefore, it doesn't destroy the edge at all. But just going around, adding this highlight is a really nice way to intensify and create a really nice glow around the edge. Maybe I'll turn the opacity down to 30%. I'm 
just allows me to build it up a bit more gradually. You don't have to do every single bit. It's okay to leave some bits with slightly less highlights and that's okay. Back to my colors, the next yellow. And then as we get more towards the center area, perhaps that yellow is gonna be ramped up a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna create a new layer. So layer four, we'll have it on top. I'm gonna to change the little N, scroll down to the add. I'm gonna put it on the soft brush within airbrushing. I'm gonna to go to this third red color on the middle row. Brush size at 3% and we'll just be a little bit cautious, 30% opacity. And just in this middle area, I'm gonna do just a kind of band of this red where I want the sun to be initially. Then I'm gonna change the orange and I'm just gonna build in my sun. to get your circular shape. If you're not super confident on how to do circles, then you could always put it up to the size that you want. So maybe about 15%. Tap it in, put the opacity up actually. Tap it in a few times like that. And then you could always go back in with the eraser set to, well, maybe the soft brush still. 3% size, 100% opacity. And you can just chip away from the top edge. And then that's allowed us to create a better circle. Probably need to go back in again with the, whoops, the red color. Again, reduce down to 3%, maybe about 50% opacity. And we'll just create a nice sort of red to blend it in across there. And we can always extend that out across the edges a little bit too. Not too much because we have the blend mode to add, which means you can really, it's better to put it down at a more subtle color. So we'll try that, maybe about 15%. We'll just cut across just a little bit, left and right, not much. Maybe I'll just spread it across that area a little bit, but not too much, like so. And now with this, I'm just gonna to go to the adjustments, bloom, just slide it across to 100%. It's just gonna help ramp it up a little bit more. And if you choose to do that again, so bloom, and again, you can ramp that across. So I'll do that, or to 100%. And it's just really building in that sun effect for us. Then I'm gonna to go to the smudge tool, airbrushing, medium brush, 2% opacity, or size rather, and 80% opacity or strength. And I'm just gonna, from this edge, push into it. So we've got some cloud now that's just gonna nibble away in this area. and just maybe push some of these colors off so we're really getting a sense of cloud. Perhaps we could even go to the orange and again with the 2% size and 50% opacity, we can just extend some of these cloud things coming off, maybe even lower so that, well, yeah, 1% size. We can just have bits of cloud that kind of are more articulated. So similar shapes to what we've got higher up and we could just have them disappearing off Press lightly. Maybe turn the opacity down to 20% or even lower if you if you struggle to really do subtle things at the higher percentage, then turn it really lo way lower. Maybe even in with the yellow, just when it gets really close to the sun there. And then gonna go to the luminance light pen. Back to my colors, I'm gonna use this yellow on the very end, zoom in a touch gonna have it at, well, we'll try maybe 50% size, 30% opacity, and I'm just gonna use this now to go in there and just really ramp up the sun effect. Just press a little less when you're going into those little details. And I'm just gonna use that to follow the general shape of our circular sun. Maybe go to the orange and we can even have a little bit more of this near the bottom. So when it's really just starting to merge where the, the ocean is or the, on that horizon, it just starts to stretch out and slightly distort the sun. I'm going to create a new layer, layer five, and change the blend mode to add once more. Going with a soft brush, airbrushing. You can use this orange, those metal colors. 
2% size, about 40% opacity. And I'm just going to further start to just add a bit more of the glow to some of these edges of these cloud areas. Bits of it just need to be ramped up a touch more. And we can also extend that up into these upper areas, allow it to fade away in part. We can have some bits that don't necessarily attach to dark cloud, but then as it comes over here, perhaps it just starts to blend and merge with some of these other shapes too. The red color, maybe we'll increase it to 4% size, press lightly. We'll just start to bring more of a glow in to some of these areas too. In fact, I think I'd like to put it up to 10% size, down to about 15% opacity. And I just want to start building in the kind of rays that are coming from the sun. maybe obscuring and even cutting in front of some of these clouds to a certain extent. I'm gonna go back in with the orange. Maybe the red is a little bit too warm. As we move around, just make sure the lines all kind of point towards the sun. So it really does represent rays that come out obviously at that angle. Back down again, 1% size, zoom in. Now it's a low opacity, so I'm gonna put it back up to about 40. Still on this orange, and just start to ramp some of this back up again. And we can go around some of these edges of this cloud. In fact, I'm gonna to go to the layer two where the dark color was and just soften it in a little bit. I've no, now I've zoomed in, I can see it's a little bit harsh. So adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that in to about the 3%, I think we'll it better. Back up to the top layer again, layer five. Let's just start to really pick up, pick up some of these edges of this cloud. I'm going to put it up to the top end of 2%, down to do some more slightly more subtle things, so 20%. That means I can just build it all in a little bit more gradually. Have some more stripes of texture that really cut across. Adds to the general noise and texture, I think. Works better. Okay, I'm gonna add some water down in the lower section. So I'm gonna create a new layer, layer six. And we're gonna go back to the airbrushing and we'll go to the medium brush. 5% size, 100% opacity, and I'm gonna select the first color on the bottom row and draw a line across, hold it until it snaps to a straight line, and then I can go to the transform, and then I can move it down to wherever I feel it's appropriate. I feel just so it kind of meets the, the light features that we've added there, I think works best. It just makes sure that it also extends beyond the edges, because when we try and do things like flood fill, the remaining gaps, it needs to definitely have hit the edge of the canvas. So now I can drag to flood fill that bottom area. You will sometimes notice little anomalies like that gap. So we'll try that again. If you hold it and then slide across, it should plug most of that gap. And if it doesn't quite, then you can just go back over it. Isn't really a problem. I'm just gonna go to that layer, tap on it, put on alpha lock. Then I'm gonna go to the black third color. 13, 10% size, really not that strong on the opacity, about 40%. And I just want to darken up that top edge a little bit, like so. Then I'm gonna switch brushes to the artistic leatherwood brush. Now I'm gonna tap on the level leatherwood brush and I want to change the spacing from 17. I want to put it more to about 45% spacing and I'm also stay on this dark color. I'm going to put the brush size to 2%, and 
the strand to 50% and I'm just going to move across, start building in texture and the alpha lock is on so I can't add it to anywhere else. It is gonna keep it all within this bottom section which is great. And we just want some left to right texture with this brush. Now we're gonna use some of the light colors over the top of it to really get rid of some of this dark color but it helps to have some of it in there. Back to my colors, I'm gonna use the second color, maybe turn the brush size up to the 3%, add some of it in the foreground. Now it's on 50% opacity, maybe I can put this higher, 70%. Add some of it across here. Back to the colors, skip the black, let's go for the fourth color. And then that really does start to contrast better. So you'll really see this one. Now you don't necessarily want to do it completely uniformly even and evenly over. So maybe it's almost in bands. So you're getting kind of waves in the, the ocean. So it's gonna be slightly distinct bands. So leaving a little bit of a sense of a streak or stripes, perhaps is gonna work. And there's nothing wrong with taking that upwards too to almost the very top. I would avoid that top area just for now. So maybe just shy of there. Go to the next color, even lighter. And just start to slow it down, be a bit more sparing with it. Maybe put it up to the top end of 3% for the foreground. It's just gonna to start to give you some bigger shapes, bigger gaps. That's more appropriate for the foreground area. We also have this end color, which is a slightly warmer color, which is gonna bring some of the colors down, not drastically, but just bring them down a little bit into the, the other areas. Back to this blue color, the second color. I'm gonna turn it down to lowest part of 2% and about 30% opacity. And we're just gonna take some of this blue up into the very top area. I think I'd like to add a bit more of the bright color. So I'm gonna to go to this third from the right, up near the top, and just start to add a bit more of that. So a lower percentage, so it's, you have to keep going over and over it to keep building it up. I'm gonna to go to that blue color and go to the color disc and I think I'd just like to nudge it up to a slightly more saturated version. I'm gonna add that onto the end. So I've just added it, but it will always be there for your color palette. And I'm just gonna add some of this to the mix. Perhaps I'll turn it up to the top, higher up on the 2%. Add some of it lower down as well. Top end of 3%, some of the lower bits. It needs just a bit more saturated blue in there. I think works better. Back to the highlights and just keep working it in. When we get slightly further off in the distance with this texture, you're gonna reduce the size of the brush and it just helps with the sense of perspective. Perhaps I'll put it back up to 50% opacity just for some of these highlights, build them back in, the streaks back in a little bit more. And this warm color. And I feel like we've not really got the, the fully the, the warmth of the sky represented. So maybe I should do it with some of the colors that are already there. So perhaps I'll go with the red. Now I want to be subtle with this. I'm gonna turn it down to 20% strength. And I'm just gonna build in with a 2% size, a bit of the red in there. I don't want to actually overdo it. We're just in the center area here a little bit. And then maybe we can go to the orange again, a little bit. Maybe I'll just go for knocking out some of the pure black in that area. In fact, so there's another way I can do that in a moment. A bit more of it over here though. And for the lighter yellow. Okay, with that layer, I'm gonna turn off alpha lock. Then I'm gonna to go to the adjustments. Gaussian blur and blur it in maybe to about 2%. I think I'd like to go onto layer four, go with the adjustments liquify on the push. Maybe it's around 40% size, pressure 60 distortion. 
60 and just nudge this down a little bit. I feel like I want to just flatten that a little bit more than it is. I feel that would work better. Happier with that. I'm going to add a little bit more within some of these areas. So I'm going to go to the top layer, create a new layer on top, change the blend mode to add, soft brush with an airbrushing, lower part 2%, size 10% opacity. We've got it on this red. And I think I'd just like to add some of these things across here. Extend some of the cloud features across there in this bottom section. I think they work a bit better. Let's add a bit more to that bottom bit where it merges there. Can even add some of that a little bit higher up still. Knock back some of these cloud areas if you feel you just want to soften them in a bit more. Not entirely happy with that, whatever that is. I can't remember why I added it there, but let's let's locate it. Which layer is it on? Oh, maybe it's on that layer. So if that's the case, we'll go back to that color. Just get rid of that. It's kind of annoying to me. So anyway, that's gone. Back up to layer seven. Back in with, well, let's go for the red color again. 2% size, 10% opacity, and yeah, we can just add a little bit more hints of texture up in this band of cloud. It doesn't have to be completely featureless. I want it really quite contrasted with everything else, but it doesn't mean it needs to be completely redundant of things in that area. Chipping away some of that. Going with the yellow again, perhaps I'll even turn the opacity up to 20%. Could be very useful. Just to, again, further ramp up some of these highlighted edges. I feel like it, it needs to be even more kind of shiny. To better, especially in the center area, to be better represent the glow of the sun a little bit more. It's really fierce and it, it really would dramatically impact on some of these edges really nicely. Backwards and forwards between that, the orange, the red, play around, get a nice balance. Orange, like I say. The red is a little bit too red in places. So the orange and the yellow, perhaps a better combination. Done a little bit too much there, maybe. So yeah, just be careful. Back to the brush. What's a 3% size? Down to 10. Just add some soft touches into the, the mix too. Back to the red, a bit more up here. I think we're close to calling that a day for this painting. A few bands of that across there, soften it in a bit, especially when we've got streaks going up and above, jutting in front of that cloud. Luminance, light pen, back to the orange, just such more. In fact, it might be better with that yellow at the end. Just ramp it up a little bit there and there. Yeah, really like that effect. So I'm gonna go in with the luminance pen again with the orange, 10% size, 40% strength, and just a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna leave this tutorial here at this point. Hope you've enjoyed watching, following along. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you did like it, hit the subscribe and don't forget the bell notification to make sure you're notified of all my future videos too. Thanks for watching. I shall see you back here soon.